and introduce our independent publisher today. Sean Kelly is here to share his Microsoft Learn Connector that he has made. So Sean, feel free to take over, use as much of the remainder of the time as you would like. It is completely yours. I obviously haven't shaved in a while, uh, based on that image. <laughs> uh, so uh, hi everyone, I'm Sean Kelly. Um, I don't have a, any presentation uh, prepared. I'm just going to go straight into demo mode for this, but uh, I've, I've been working with Platform for over a decade now, uh, most recently with HCL Tech as an educator. Uh, so I've, I've been using the Microsoft Learn catalog uh, internally in my role, uh, and I had a custom connector built internally uh, to access some of the content there. And I figured that uh, it might be a good idea to, to publish it, uh, both to learn about how the certification uh, process works because I train people on custom connectors as well internally. Uh, and also, um, you know, it, it might be useful for some people, you know, so um, so so that's where, what I did um, and that's why I'm here to, uh, to show you it today. Uh, so what is it? Well, basically the Microsoft Learn Catalog API is uh, a way to access the Microsoft Learn Catalog, uh, self-evident, um, and you can access all of this type of information. Um, now, uh, I'll, I'll just plug some of these. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the docs or anything, but I'll plug them into the into the chat if people want to read uh, afterwards. But uh, basically, you've got this API endpoint, uh, which is going to uh, access all of that content. It's a huge a huge JSON object. It's just that single endpoint. So if you want to access um, if you want to access um, certifications or learning paths or modules or whatever it is from that catalog, you hit that endpoint and you you provide a type if you want to filter it down, right? So that's basically what what the custom connector wrapped around. Uh, so coming into the the custom connector definition, um, basically here we we have this independent publisher one. This is a Microsoft API, um, but I uh, uh, published the connector, therefore independent publisher. Um, so within this, um, we've got a single action because we've got that single endpoint uh, to hit, um, and then we pass in parameters. Uh, the, the critical one really is the type. Uh, if you don't want to return everything from that catalog, uh, you need to provide a type. Um, I've tried to kind of give detailed descriptions so that if you're in Power Automate or in uh, Power App using this, that you'll get those prompts, including examples. So you can say, okay, well, the example here, it's a comma separated string. This would return modules and learning paths. Uh, so you, you're not restricted to returning a single type, for example. And it's, it's the same for basically all of these. Um, and you've got levels, roles, products. If you're familiar with going into Microsoft Learn, I hope most of you are, uh, and you can filter down uh, for different products, uh, you know, beginner, advanced, intermediate, uh, all of those are basically represented here as parameters. Uh, so that's basically what, what the connector does. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you um, how to access it both from a flow in Power Automate, quite a simple one, just to show um, the endpoint, and then I'll show how I've used it in a Canvas app as well. Um, so I've got a, a flow here um, that I just created earlier, uh, and uh, I always wanted to say here's one I made earlier, so there we go. Um, and we've got the, uh, this is just an instant flow, um, and I've um, I've got a trigger here, and I basically uh, want to capture the type from the user, uh, because I don't want to return everything uh, from that uh, from that API. Uh, so basically I've provided, uh, uh, you know, a text uh, drop-down list uh, that, that would be kind of captured from the user. Um, I'll probably just delete this um, and just add it again, uh, just to show uh, it's not that difficult, but adding a new step, uh, we're going to look for the uh, Microsoft Learn uh, connector, um, and then uh, we've got all of the kind of documentation gets returned there. If I select this, you can see it's just that single action that's there, um, but then we've got all of this, and this is just the exact same um, text that we saw from the documentation, right? So that's just coming through. Uh, so if you hover over any of these, you'll get a kind of description about what, what it's expecting with an example of what would be acceptable uh, at the end. Uh, so in this case, I've got a, a, a parameter here called content type. So that's for my type property. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and just dynamically grab the uh, 
uh, content type uh, from the input. Um, and that's fine. I, I won't do any further filtering here. I'll show you further filtering in the Canvas app. Uh, so if I save this, Um, OK, and then we'll just uh, test it out. Um, and then we've got the various different uh, options. So I'm going to say courses. Run. Um, so let's just hit that endpoint. And if we look at the output, we should just see courses. OK, so we've just returned courses from that um, API and we've got the various different uh, courses there. Um, and you'll see it provides it, it returns a lot of metadata there as well, so it's quite useful if you want to build your own LMS, for example. Um, and then uh, let's try another one. Um, so I'll uh, just test it one more time and grab some learning paths or all learning paths in this case. And again, that's run if we check the output. Uh, we can see now that we've hit the same endpoint, but now we're returning learning paths. OK. Um, OK, there we go. Um, so very simple. Um, and then in the learning paths, we've got, uh, you know, um, the, the metadata there, like the summary, what roles it's for, what products it's applicable for, um, the subjects, the unique identifier, um, and uh, other things like the modules. Uh, so we've in the, for this particular one, uh, which is um, related to Azure, uh, we've got these six modules, um, and that's the unique identifier of the modules. Uh, so I'll be kind of I'm using that in in the Canvas app. So that's kind of why I'm I'm pointing that out right now. Uh, so that's it. Very simple. Uh, how you use it. Hopefully, hopefully the if if you are using it and uh, you know uh, the the tool tips and the description should kind of clarify how to use it. Uh, my details have been shared. So if anybody gets stuck, I reluctantly agree for you to contact me for uh, support. Um, so uh, let's see. So next up, we've got. Uh, I want to show a Canvas app. So I've built a Canvas app um, that uh, that that basically accesses. Uh, the the content and displays it really. It's just a, a single page uh, canvas app uh, or a single screen um, with a few galleries in place. Uh, so we've got uh, a couple of galleries here uh, for learning paths, modules. I'll get into how I connected to the uh, connector to, to, to kind of populate these in a second. Um, but if I jump in over into uh, play mode, uh, basically we've got um, the, the it's it's loading all learning paths by default and then uh it's it's applying these two filters so i've got a couple of combo boxes here uh, one for levels one for roles as we saw in the in the connector in the parameters there's probably what eight or nine of them so i could i could have added a lot more uh, i'm just a bit lazy uh, so i just uh, picked these as a start point so you can filter change um you know change to say intermediate developer um, and you've got you know integrate with uh, Power Automate and Flows, you can see it's making a call there to retrieve the actual module information. Um, because one thing we don't get in the learning path response is the details of the module. We only get the unique identifier of the module, as we saw in the previous uh, step. But here I can open in Microsoft Learn. Uh, so from there I can uh, launch the learning path. Or if I want to launch an individual uh, module, I can go there and, and launch the module. Uh, so it's as simple as that. Um, and um, you know you can you can change. It's now making another call. Uh, I could I could make this uh, a, you know it, it's kind of uh, staggered a bit. So I haven't put a huge amount of effort into this app. It's not a production app, um, but uh, it kind of you get the idea. So how how do we um, leverage that that connector that's been published to access this content? Uh, well, if we jump back into edit mode uh, again. There's the, the two main galleries. There's the gallery for the learning path here on the left, and there's a gallery on the right, uh, lower right there for modules. Uh, so if I go into learning paths, uh, the first thing to, to look at is the items uh, property. 
Uh, so this is the that single endpoint on the connector, get learning content, uh, the exact same uh, endpoint that we just saw in Power Automate. And then we can optionally pass um, as many parameters as we want uh, from uh, what was the original docs. So we've got uh, all of these different parameters. So we can say only give me uh, learning paths modified in the last X days or since the last date, or give me them with this role or this level, et cetera. Uh, so in this case, I've passed in the locale, the type, the level, the role, the product. Um, and you can see the level and the role are just coming from that combo box, the, the level combo box and the role combo box. So whatever is selected uh, on the screen there. You'll also see there's a variable for a product. Um, if we get time, uh, I'll, I'll show you how that works. Um, but uh, we're, we're basically saying from that, we want to retrieve learning paths. OK, so that's what we're presenting. Um, so so that's 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 that first call. So when the app runs, it's uh, it's making a call to to populate the learning paths uh, from that connector. Now, in the um, if we remember the uh, response that we get, we have this array of modules. So I'm just using that to then go off and get the details for the modules uh, because I want I want more information other than the unique identifier. Uh, so that's what I'm doing in the on select for the um, for the gallery. So in the on select, I'm basically uh, I've got this uh, learning path modules variable, and I'm uh, or collection sorry, and then I'm uh, saying for each module that was in the response from the learning path call. So remember in this one it's what five or six objects in that array. So for each of those modules, I want to loop through with the unique identifier and. Uh, and populate this collection uh, from that same endpoint, the get learning content. But I want to use that unique identifier that we got previously from the learning path call uh, and then return the modules. And that's going into the collection. And then if we go over here and uh, we see the collection items property is just set as that, or the items property for this gallery is set as that collection. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Um, uh, what else am I doing? Um, so uh, let's see, is there anything else interesting on select? Uh, OK, yeah, so I've got like a levels, roles, products um, collection as well. Uh, and I'm I'm basically getting the levels. You can probably guess from the name. I'm getting the levels, the roles, and the products from that learning path. And again, let's just kind of switch back here for a second. Uh, I'm getting the levels, the roles, and the products from that learning path, and I'm adding them to a collection uh, so that I can display it um, on the screen, right? So when I come here, it's these kind of um, these kind of buttons here, these message, these things here. So that's a gallery just with the appended levels, roles, and products, uh, just to kind of recreate what you see in Microsoft Learn because they do the same thing. Um, so um, yeah, and then. Uh, the final thing I wanted to talk about in this app in, in the three minutes that I've got is the um, the products. So in the items property, um, I'm uh, using a variable called uh, product. And why am I doing that? Uh, well, I'm doing that for Teams integration. So if I come to the app uh, on start um, property, um, you'll see that I'm doing some things, but in in particular, I want to kind of look at the the product. So I'm setting a default product of Power Platform. That's why the app respond re, re, returns the Power Platform learning paths by default. But then I'm saying, if you are passing a channel ID, if this app is, re, re, receives a channel ID, then change that product depending on the channel. Uh, and that's a that's a channel in Teams. Uh, so if I've got the Dataverse or Common Data Service channel in Teams, I only want to return the common data service or dataverse products. Same for AI Builder or Power Apps, etc. Uh, so then we can come over, uh, and then this this ID here, this is the unique identifier of the channel in Teams. So I've hard coded these channels uh, from my particular Teams instance. So if I jump over to Teams, I've got a Power Platform Learning um, team with all of these channels. So if I go to say the AI Builder. Um, uh, channel and go to the catalog. Now, because the channel ID is being passed in from Teams, it's only going to filter uh, for the AI Builder uh, learning paths. 
or if I go to Power Apps and go to the Learn Catalog, this should be passing in Power Apps as the product in that variable based on the Teams channel. So I'm only getting that. Um, and then if I go to Power Automate, I don't have it. Uh, it's quite easy to add though. I can say add a Power App. Um, and then I've got my Learn Catalog, save. And now this should be passing in Power Automate. I had to do that because Power Automate was the subject earlier. I uh, didn't want them to feel left out, the Power Automate product team. Um, and now we've got our um, our product being set there, right? So um, it's showing a few different things, but it's all leveraging the uh, that custom connector, which became a, a published independent publisher connector. Uh, so that's that's it. Uh, we've got one or two minutes left. So any questions or uh, anything like that, I'd be happy to to answer if I can. Call to action. Try it out. Let me know if you get uh, <laughs> if you get stuck anywhere. Call yeah, Sean, it's very it's very cool it. to see. Yeah, it's very cool to see how like it starts as just one action, and then you're able to leverage that to to do a lot more. Uh, that was a really cool scenario. Can you can you filter documentation uh, by path? I basically um, I put a scenario in the chat that was like uh, like I was imagining uh, using this. You could probably create a uh, an app to show you the, the the most recently updated docs under some path like the Power Platform slash ILM path. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't return the document, the full documentation set, it's all learning content based. So it's learning paths um, and underneath that modules and underneath that units. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're the kind of granularity for learning paths. And then you've got certifications and things like that, but you don't actually have access to the wider documentation base, what was formerly docs.microsoft.com. So you, oh. wouldn't, you wouldn't return all of the ALM pages, for example, but you could do that scenario for the content that is stored there, like learning paths and stuff. Nice. Daniel asked, is it only module slash training? Uh, well, it's not it's not just that, but it's um, uh, so uh, let's let's go back to the um, the original docs for a second, which is here. Um, so the um, well, actually, I'll go to my documentation. So the um, I've I've got it here. So supported values are this. So that's what's that's what you can return from the API. So uh, when we're thinking about Microsoft Learn learning paths, so you've got learning paths at the top can contain many modules, and each module can contain one or more units. Uh, so you've got learning paths, modules, and units. You can also return certifications and exams. So if you visualize the certifications page or the exams page, it gives you metadata back there with the related products and stuff like that. Everything else is kind of like metadata, like the levels, the roles, the products, the subjects. They're those kind of filtering attributes. So they're they're smaller. Well, then I think that sets. answered a different question about is it possible to filter through PL 400, et cetera? Yeah, yeah, you could go in uh, and just uh, change the type uh, to exams um, and then uh, it would return all exams. Or if you know the UID, uh, the unique, unique identifier for PL400, you can uh, pass in uh, the UID parameter with that, um, with that PL400 UID and it will just return that single exam with all of the, de the details of that exam. Not the questions and answers, though. Awesome. Are there any more questions? If not, that about concludes our session for today.